Hi, this is Joseph Anthony of TappingWithMusic.com. Thank you so much for stopping by again. Reading from Chapter 10, Discover the Wonder of Giving, from Spiritual Economics, The Prosperity Process, by Eric Butterworth. One of my favorite books, and this chapter is really, uh, might be my favorite chapter in the book, although I like them all. Um, and uh, we may not fit it all into one video, so we may do a little two-part series here, a little mini-series. We'll see. But anyway, I love this chapter, <laughs> all that said, because it really speaks to me and, and how, I, um, how I envision things. I really feel like we are of one mind in this chapter, and um, yeah. So let's get started. In a book devoted to the theme of prosperity, it might be assumed that the emphasis would be on how to get. Perhaps now you will understand why we say that such an emphasis is not only grossly materialistic, but it is also extremely misleading. Any study of prosperity fails unless it teaches you how and why to give. And that is precisely what this chapter is about. Giving does not refer simply to money. It is a process that may involve money, but it, is also involves, it also involves your work and the many ways in which you make contact with life. Giving is basically an attitude with which you touch things. The word giving has become so completely identified with pious acts of philanthropy that it is difficult to think of the word without referring to the commercial of the church. The emphasis has been on what the gift is to and what rewards come back in the form of heavenly grace, a name on the stained glass window, a healthy deduction on the income tax return. I'm going to stop there for a minute. <laughs> I love this, just the way he starts the book, this chapter off, that the emphasis on prosperity, if you want to prosper, is to learn how to give. Um, that's the key to the whole thing. That's the key to the security that we've talked about in, in the last couple of videos. Um, the security even of wanting financial security or it's all in the giving and that it literally is a law in the universe the more you give the more you get and so we don't give just to get but we need to know that that's there not be ashamed of having that as part of our consciousness the main thing is the law underneath that To give is why we're here. It's why we're here. And he, and he explains that a bit more here. Life is not lived from outside in, but from inside out. Unless we understand this, we miss the whole meaning of life. The purpose of life is not acquisition, but unfoldment and personal development. Even in the teaching of metaphysics, there has been a tremendous swing toward this revolutionary attitude towards money and things. Thus, many books and courses by teachers of truth emphasize how-to techniques for demonstrating money and possessions and jobs and success. The constant theme is get, 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 get. Just hold the right thought, and you can get anything you want. And the grossest level of materialism is reached when truth groups are led in singing prosperity songs in which the refrain affirms money, 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 a sad degradation of a beautiful spiritual process. Now, of course, Butterworth was a minister, and he's talking like one there, his relationship to the church and, and spiritual teachers. And, you know, I, and again, this was written in 1980 or something like that, early in the 80s. And it's even more true today. There's an incredible emphasis on that prosperity consciousness, meaning get more money. And it's certainly been a part of my life. I've had it in me um, a lot over the last couple of years, trying to work through money blocks and things like that, my definitions of wealth and abundance. And I'm still working on all those things. Thank goodness there's Eric Butterworth to help. <laughs> um, and so if we have this and we've done those things, you know, my first thought when I, when I read that paragraph, I was like, oh my God, I have sang songs and done tapping videos about money. And I came to, you know what, Joseph, no shame in that. It's fine. It's where you are. It's all good. 
knowing that underneath all that, underneath that prosperity consciousness, more and more is growing an idea of a giving consciousness, of expressing my divine creativity through what I do, through these tapping videos, my music, and all of that. And so, if you're in a place where your emphasis is on acquiring money, no need to feel ashamed of that. It, it's okay. It's, it's part of the learning to the difference between divine security and, and our human security. Perfectly wonderful to get our basic needs met. We have to do that. Perfectly wonderful to want to buy things and to have money and to get more. Nothing wrong with that at all. He's just letting us know, however, that <laughs> that's not the real purpose of our lives. The purpose is to unfold who we are really unto eternity, as divine expressions. And, uh, yeah, he goes on a little bit more with this. This contemporary trend toward materialism is attributable in large part to the sad neglect of the church in teaching the laws of giving. Religious institutions have failed miserably in this respect, undoubtedly because they have been preoccupied with their own need to receive support. Preachers have talked of giving as returning to God a portion of one's income. Churchgoers have been lulled into a pious acceptance of this form of idealism. However, it completely skirts the issue of inward-rooted giving as it deals with an anemic God of the skies who bargains with us for a giving return. Jesus said, Consider the lilies of the field and how they grow. By nature's law, the lily grows and unfolds from a bulb to a flower. It is a discernible unfoldment from within outward. There is no obligation for the flower to return a portion of its fragrance and color and form to nature. There is no way it could do this even if it wanted to, because life is a forward-growing, unfolding experience. Don't miss the implication of this homely illustration. Your life is God's gift to you. What you do with it is your gift to God. So, to give for the hell of giving, one could say, to give because it is who we are, that's what we were born to do. Our natural unfolding of who we are, of loving ourselves, becoming more worthy, touching our heart's desires, we naturally give. The flower isn't obligated to give, but as it unfolds, it naturally gives of its beauty, its fragrance. It just does it as it is unfolding. And we are the same way. Now, there's a lot of spiritual truth to tithing and things like that. Now, I don't think Eric Butterworth is suggesting we don't do those types of exercises. What he is saying, however, I, at least my reading of this reading, <laughs> is that we give because it is what we are designed to do. And we will get in return. That's just what happens. However, the emphasis shouldn't be on a bargain with God, I'll do this if you do that. Given for the hell of given. And now he talks a little bit about the difference between a giver and a taker. And you know what? I think I'm going to stop there for now because there's more I want to talk about. And we'll do that in another video. So, thank you for watching part one of Discover the Wonder of Giving from Eric Butterworth's book, Spiritual Economics. This is Joseph Anthony of TappingWithMusic.com saying thank you so much for watching, and I hope you tune in to the next video where we will continue our little study. Take care.